the nose, we're going to do the nose here, is a different type of material. It's It can be shiny because wolves and dogs, they don't have sweat glands like we do um, in their skin because it's every every follicle or every pore pretty much is has hair growing out of it. There's no, like on our skin, it's some's hair, some's oil, some's sweat glands. So in, in their skin, they don't have nothing. It's just fur. So they sweat actually out of their paw pads and their nose. That's why you see dogs have shiny noses a lot of times is because they're sweating. And to do this, it requires, like I said, like a, a knowledge of how light works on shiny surfaces. This is called specular in video games. It's, it, you know, it's kind of the light kind of glinting off of a wet surface. You know, you can look at, like Gears of War has a lot of that, actually. It's, it's a good place to look at that. They have a lot of rocky surfaces with um, shiny textures. Even um, Uncharted, Drake's Fortune for PS3 has a lot of that because it's in the jungle with a lot of water. It's good to look at for reference. Uh, if you don't play games, go out on the, and look at the street, like asphalt or pavement, you know, after it's rained, you get that kind of effect out of that. So this is uh, his nose. The light's from the upper left, as it was before. So we'll start shading. Um, get a dark gray, not black. You want to start very close to black. And actually what you do is you paint the left side. Now you're saying, well, that doesn't make any sense. Everything else was painted from, you know, all the shadows were on the bottom right. Why are you doing it this way? Well, I'm actually going to do it both ways, and you'll see why in a second. But more of it will be on the upper left, and just the edges here I'm going to do. Just where the, the hole in the nostril is, and the edges of his nose, and the bottom. And that's all I'm going to paint. All that's going to stay bright. And I might actually even get darker here. A little bit darker, and then I'm going to go across that line there. Follow that line across his nose. Do a little bit on that side. And fill in the nostril some more. Okay, now, that didn't make any sense, right? Well, what you'll do is you choose either this gray or a very, very light color. I'll probably go lighter than that. So it'll stand out more. Yeah, get a pretty pretty light gray. Make a very small brush tip and paint just the edge. Nothing else. See that? You can get a little bit bigger now, but not too much. You want to kind of stay away. You, you want a very kind of soft edge here, but you want more of it to be right there and then you can actually go with your white and get just the edge now the reason this looks like this is because it's shiny and regardless of anything like I say if his nose was white and the light is coming from the upper left you can't see that highlight then it has to be dark to see, you have to have a shadow to see light. I don't know if that makes any sense, but you've, you've got to have something that defines an edge. So we have a dark part, with the, and that makes this light part that much lighter and more intense. Um, to add to it, you can come over here and add a little bit of light. You can come around like the nostril area. Let's see how this is going to look. Like right at the bottom. Kind of right there. It didn't look too good. So see it's it's just a little bit of you got to experiment see what looks good. Looking at actual pictures helps, but there you go. See it it looks sort of shiny. Um to texturize that, an easy way to do it without actually having to go look down like a, or without having to hunt Google for a dog nose texture, wolf nose texture, whatever. Go to filter at your top menu here. Go to noise. And go to add noise. Uh, set it to uniform. Or gosh, whichever you like, but uh, because they don't seem to make much of a difference. Make sure it's monochromatic. Make sure that monochromatic is checked. And just put the amount down. 
a lot. See how low I have it here. But see, it, with the noise, it kind of gives you that, you know, porous kind of nose that a, a dog would have or a wolf would have. And you just hit OK. There you go. Okay, so what advantages do you have if you have the ink on your own layer, uh, aside from being able to easily select everything? Well, for one thing, uh, you can actually color the lines similar to a lot of uh, cartoons. Uh, for instance, if I get in close, this is white, and the lines are black, and it stands out a lot because of, because of that. Uh, so what we can do, choose a dark color. It's not black. Just choose a really dark color, and on your ink layer, You'll have to unlock it if you had it locked before and set the lock of to transparency so that all transparent pixels are locked, which means I can't paint right here, but I can paint right here on the actual lines. So what you can do with this is paint your lines like that. See that? And it actually kind of blends it in, makes them softer. And that's how they do with a lot of uh, animation. Um, so like instead of having black outlines right here, I've got brown, and that, and it just looks, you know, it it it, it could be something that you can incorporate into your style. Like for the blue, I can make the blue the lines blue here. So uh, you know that's another thing that that it's an advantage of. Um, you could do crazy things like inverting the lines or making them all weird colors because they're by themselves. You can modify them however you like. And that's really it. Uh, other than a background, right? Uh, so you want a background. Uh, well, having your lines off of that is also very useful. Say so like your, line, your lines are still connected to that white background. Well, you can't add a background unless you put the background over all this stuff and said it's a multiply and try to you'd have to cut all kind of things out it'd be very aggravating so having this all set separately is very good so I've actually got a background open I have this green thing here it's a leaf with some water droplets on so how do I get a background into my other picture well I've got them both open and pretty much the simplest way is to select the move tool you can go up here and press it it's uh, the V on the keyboard. And then click on the image that you want to use as a background. Click and drag it over to yours. And you'll see that it, right around here, it changes to black. Right when I move it over, let go of the mouse button. Ta da! I can minimize this. So now I have a background. But it doesn't take up the whole thing. So what do I do? I can actually reposition it with the move tool and it still doesn't take up the whole thing well how do I do that you transform it with your your background image you can actually go to edit free transform or as you can see here control T on the keyboard this brings up a box and it surrounds the image that you're trying to transform every corner has a handle that allows you to click on it and drag it around lets you reposition it however you like so you can grab the corners and make it fit the whole canvas if you move outside of that box you see it changes to this little arrow curvy arrow if you start clicking you can actually rotate it so maybe you want a background that's rotated some kind of angle to, to match your character so once you've got what you uh, think is good you can press the check mark up here or hit enter on your keyboard if you didn't want it, you could press that uh, no symbol. And there you have it. Background in place. Character colored. 